With her last breath, Chino's grandmother told him about the prophecy of a girl with blue eyes who would save the kingdom of Zawadi from the tyranny of King Moyo. And the only thing standing between her destiny and its fulfillment was the king himself. In the kingdom of Zawadi, King Moyo's first wife Nkosi went into labor. The entire palace was a buzz, expecting the birth of a boy, the Zawadi crown prince. But to their surprise, immediately after she delivered a baby boy, she felt another kick in her stomach, indicating a second baby. When she finally gave birth, it was a girl with striking blue eyes. The king, shocked and disturbed by the blue-eyed girl, immediately summoned the village oracle. The oracle, with a grave expression, declared the girl a bad omen, destined to bring down the kingdom. King Moyo, fearing for his reign, ordered Chino the palace guard to get rid of the baby. When Chino arrived and was given the baby, his facial expression immediately changed. He remembered the stories his grandmother used to tell him about the people with blue eyes who lived in a village north of the kingdom of Zawadi. Now, under the king's orders, Chino set out to kill the baby, but he had other plans. He took his horse and the baby north of the palace, riding the entire night towards the enchanted sacred forest of Nakaima following his late grandmother's map. He finally reached the sacred forest, a place where everyone was afraid to enter. Legend had it that anyone who entered never made it out. But Chino believed in his grandmother's tales of the blue-eyed people who lived in harmony beyond the trees. Chino blew his trumpet at the entrance of the forest to call for the blue-eyed people, but nothing happened. Confused and devastated that his grandmother's stories might not have been true, he decided to leave the baby under a tree, hoping that any passerby would find mercy and raise her. He headed back to the palace that night and lied to the king, claiming the baby girl was killed. King Moyo was relieved and celebrated, but Nkosi was filled with sadness and anger over the loss of her daughter. The king ordered everyone to keep the events of that night a secret, threatening death to anyone who spoke of it. Meanwhile, in the sacred forest, the blue-eyed people had come to the edges of the forest, but they were hiding, unsure why a stranger was calling for their help. After Chino left, they picked up the baby and took her to the village chief. When the chief held the baby, he had a vision of the untold prophecy of the Chosen One. He immediately knew she was the one and named her Naledi, which means a star. Naledi grows up among the people with blue eyes, learning about their history and magical abilities. The villagers recognized her gift and taught her the ancient arts of healing, passing down their knowledge of herbs and spells. She harnesses her power discovering a deep connection with nature and forest spirits. The village chief mentors her, explaining the prophecy and her destiny to save Zawadi. Naledi trains in combat, strategy and magic, becoming a formidable young woman. She forms close bonds with the villagers, especially her best friend Zuri, who also has blue eyes and magical abilities. As she grows, Naledi learns about the tyranny of King Moyo and the suffering of people outside the forest. Naledi also discovered she could communicate with animals. She first realized this when a young wolf separated from its pack approached her. She could understand its cries and with gentle words, Hoa stood back to health. Over time, she became close to the wolf pack who saw her as one of their own. She learned their ways, their hierarchy, and eventually became their leader.
they taught her to move silently, to hunt, and to fight with precision and strength. While Naledi thrived in the forest, the royal family faced turmoil. Nkosi, unable to bear the grief of losing her daughter, fell into a deep depression. Her health deteriorated and she eventually died, leaving King Moyo and their son Tembo behind. Tembo grew up under his father's harsh influence, becoming a cruel and arrogant prince. He was grown to even be more ruthless than Moyo himself, taking pleasure in punishing those who defied him. Now King Moyo was haunted by recurring nightmares. Each night, he dreamt of a shadowy feature with blue eyes and a pack of wolves chasing him through the forest. These dreams filled him with a sense of independent doom that he could never shake, making him more paranoid and vicious. Naledi was originally forbidden from leaving the village, but her curiosity grew with each passing year. One day, she escaped the forest and ventured to a nearby town. There, she met Chino, the palace guard, who recognized her from her blue eyes. Shocked to see her alive, he approached her and explained her true identity and the prophecy. Naledi felt a deep sense of purpose awaken within her. News of Naledi's existence spread quietly through the villagers. Thanks to Chino's careful whispers, the people long suffering under King Moyo's and Prince Tembo's tyranny began to see hope once more. Stories of the blue-eyed girl with magical powers began to circulate, giving them the courage to dream of a brighter future. Tembo's 18th birthday was approaching, and preparations for his coronation were underway. The kingdom was in despair with the people fearing an even harsher rule under Tembo. On the day of Tembo's coronation, the palace was filled with nobles and guards. Just as the ceremony reached its climax, a commotion arose at the entrance. Naledi, accompanied by her wolf pack and Chino, walked into the palace. Her blue eyes shone with determination and the walls flanked her protectively. The crowd gasped, recognizing her as the girl from the prophecy. Tembo's eyes widened in disbelief and anger. Naledi stepped forward, her voice clear and strong. I challenge you for the throne, she declared, her walls growling in unison. King Moyo's nightmare had come to life and the kingdom held its breath, waiting to see what would happen. Naledi and Tembo faced each other. And that brings us to the end of part one of this beautiful story. If you enjoyed it, kindly give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below what you think is going to happen in this kingdom of Zawadi. Who will win, Naledi or Prince Tembo? Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.